Hey, we got a new theme song. You want to hear it? You are Locked On MLB, your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. There you go. There's a new theme song. And I specifically said, could you make that kind of effect like when Qui-Gon Jinn tried to stick his lightsaber in the door and give me a little bit of that liquid metal effect that they had in Terminator 2. That's right. Welcome to Locked On Sci-Fi Movie References, formerly known as Locked On MLB. This is the podcast we talk about baseball all season long. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please, I am begging you, call me, where is it? There, call me Sully. There's my lower third. I am a podcaster, been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now. I've done a lot of different things, but I've been here at the Lockdown Podcast Network now. This is my sixth full season here. And for those of you who are new to the show, no, I don't talk about Shohei Otani all the time. In fact, I'm hopefully putting that story on the back burner. I'd much rather be talking about baseball because that's what I kind of sort of love to talk about. And there's a lot of fun baseball going on. I'm doing this as a live stream, easy for you to say, on the 13th day of April, 2024. Get your taxes in, mine are in, ha! And uh, there are already some games that are going on. Uh, Right now, it looks like the Yankees are starting their game with the Guardians. They got a doubleheader, and the Tigers are also playing a doubleheader with Minnesota. That's going to start pretty soon. We got a full slate of games going on today. Should be a fun Saturday. And it's one of my uh, new listeners who goes by Charles Darwin. I'm going to assume it's not the same dude. Otherwise, man, that is a big wrinkle in evolution right there. Uh, Charles Darwin asks, does this podcast do weekends too? If so, I'm subscribing. Well, welcome aboard and subscribe because, yeah, I do shows on the weekend. And you can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And once again, we got to get all this gambling talk, all the trauma of gambling gambling scandals out focus on the game but first remind you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel make every moment more right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed that's 150 bucks win or lose Ape, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started I know if he used FanDuel do you know what he would have got 150 bucks win or lose and then he'd only be several tens of millions of dollars in the hole Look at I, I I love our friends over at FanDuel and I and and, I, and my if I was wearing a hat I would tip it, but uh, how do you get millions of dollars in the hole? At what point don't you just say, yeah, you know I think I'm gonna I'm gonna sit this one out. I don't not I'm, it's not for me. It's not for me. But one thing I do take a look at is I take a look at who owned baseball, and let's see who owned baseball for the twelfth day of April, twenty twenty four. So who owned baseball for the 12th day of April, 2023? Mark Canna reached base three times, including a home run as the Tigers topped Minnesota 8-2. to two. Reed Detmers pitched in the seventh, fanning six as the Angels blanked Boston 7 nothing. Freddie Peralta and Willie Adamas worked together to clobber the Baltimore Orioles 11-1. Willie Adamas went three for five, and Freddie Peralta struck out 11. Earning half wobs, Jake Irvin threw six strong innings, but the Nats lost to the A's. Dylan Tate gave some solid relief to Baltimore, but it was too little too late. Kyle Tucker homered twice in the Astros' 12-8 slugfest loss to Texas. And Jesse Winker collected four hits, including a game-tying ninth-inning home run, but the Nationals were doubled up by the A's 2-1. to one. They all own baseball on the 12th day of April, 2024. All right, I recorded that uh, for the short that I do. I try to do as many of those as I can during the week. I put a little short on on the YouTube page, files on YouTube. Uh, maybe you'll notice I made a mistake in that recording. There, I said it was uh, 2023. So oh, those are not retroactive wobs. I'm still saying 2023. What is it? It's mid-April. Maybe by August I'll get used to saying 2024. Um, there you go. By the way, but if we're going to rewind the clock back to 2023... Well, let's do that for a second, because uh, I'm going to post on Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram, and maybe I'll put it down here in the show notes or put a link or do something weird uh, to link to a 
episode that I did on May 21st, 2023. First of all, with a much worse camera than one I'm using. It, it was, uh, uh, my camera was not as clear. So it looked like I was doing a Barbara Walters interview to make myself look hazy. But the, the episode that I did on May 21st, 2023, the title of it was the Toronto Blue Jays need to fire John Schneider right now. That was the title that I put on there. Granted, it's a subtle title. It's kind of vague. We're not sure where Sully stands on that particular topic. But I said that May 21st, you got to get a new manager. It's not working. It is not working. And this is no slight on John Schneider. John Schneider's a baseball lifer, and he was the manager for two specific reasons. The Blue Jays fired Charlie Montoyo in the middle of the 2022 season. Even though at the time they were a playoff team, they were kind of underachieving. Montoya was out and Schneider came in and they started playing better under Schneider. Now, a lot of times teams tend to play better when a new manager codes up because it kind of gives a jolt and a burst of life to the team. Like, oh, wow, we, we better get going here. Or, okay, there's a change in culture. It's shaking the proverbial etch-a-sketch. And... Did that happen because Schneider was a good manager, you know, the perfect fit, or because things just happened to uh, work out that way with a jolt for the second half of the 22 season? Well, as I mentioned on that episode, the Blue Jays lost the playoff series to Seattle in an embarrassing way. We're blowing that giant lead in the second game. And I remember when that game was over, I thought, well, looks like they're getting a new manager because just an, he was an interim manager. It wasn't like a beloved figure. But he came back, and as I noted last May, something seems off. The team is not playing to the level where it could. And they were built last year to win. They made big acquisitions. They made big swing for the fences moves. And as we remember what happened last year, you didn't have a good Red Sox team, and you really didn't have a good Yankee team. Neither of them made the playoffs. You don't have the excuse of, well, how are we going to complete compete in this division and as it turned out the Blue Jays did make the playoffs but once again they got bumped and bumped in an embarrassing manner to Minnesota not exactly a powerhouse in the postseason and the managerial decision to pull Kikuchi on that second game whether that came from on high or whether that came from Schneider we'll probably never know but the fact of the matter is it looked bad. I remember thinking, well, okay, that's it for Schneider. Nope. Nope, it's not. And then you take a look at the team right now. The team right now is kind of sluggish. The team right now is not playing up to the expectations that they have. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. and some of them are not playing very well. And they are they're off to kind of a, you know, kind of a dull start. Now, they wound up winning a series against Seattle, but that turned into a little bit of, well, Seattle's also off to a dull start, and someone has to win that series, as it was Toronto won it. But you could think, okay, you went to Seattle, took advantage of a Mariners team that seemed a little sluggish, and now you're heading home. You're heading home for some easy wins because right out of the gate comes the Colorado Rockies. Colorado Rockies, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, everyone who's a huge Rockies here. Sorry, Paul Holden of Lockdown Rockies, who does a great job. And oh, by the way, um, I'm just going to a quick shout out to the new hosts of Lockdown Blue Jays, Carter and Braden. They're doing a fabulous job. If, you, if you're not listening to them or following them, they're doing a great job at Lockdown Blue Jays. Check it out. I'm going to have them on the show hopefully pretty soon. But the Rockies are one of the worst teams in baseball. So you come home, and what you want to do is you want to start building some of that momentum. You want got to start, okay, we're going to start winning series. You got to start winning games. Gosman's on the mound, not been great, but okay, you're playing Colorado at home, get a little bit of momentum. What happened last night? It turned into the Ryan McMahon show. Now, I don't blame Schneider specifically for letting Gosman go a little too deep in the game because he was trying to stretch him out. He was trying to say, Come on, get through the fourth and fifth. And he didn't. He got clobbered. Fine. But 
they wound up losing 12 to 4. And believe it or not, it wasn't even that close. The Blue Jays got a pair of garbage runs at the end of the game when the Rockies, you know, reliever was basically just hucking it right down the middle, saying, come on, let's just end this game. The final score was 12 to 4. The Blue Jays had a 2 to 1 lead and then let up 11 unanswered runs to the Rockies and the Rockies pitching staff, which is not exactly the 1970 Baltimore Orioles or the 1995 Atlanta Braves. Hell, they're not even the 2018 Rockies. They're one of the worst teams in baseball. And to have any momentum coming in, they beat like a rented drum. And they have to win the next two games in order to save face and win a series against one of the worst teams in baseball at home. Yariel Rodriguez is making his major league debut. Cuban star, who knows? He may be great. Blue, J- Blue Jays may win the next two. Well, let me tell you something. When we get back here, I have some absolute thoughts that if you say, hey, 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 Sully, this is too small a sample size, I would say absolutely not, absolutely not. And do you know what? It's time for the Blue Jays to make some smart consumer decisions. Speaking of which, hey, uh, let's hear a little bit from our friends from Ibotta. Are you are you aware of what Ibotta is? Now, this is a time when you, you have to make some spring cleaning. Now, I think the Blue Jays should be doing some spring cleaning with their manager, but at home, it's in with the out, out with the new, new with the hood. However it is, you bring in new stuff, bring in new clothes, but don't splurge on anything without getting cash back in return. And for that, you better use Ibotta. What is it? Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items, from grocery to beauty supplies to toys, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip that you've been, or maybe get, go on that trip you want to go on, or the fancy dinner you've been on. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. But with Yabata, just add your offers in the app, upload the receipt. You get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account or to PayPal or to gift cards. Join over 50 million users earn cash back every time you shop. From over 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. The code is right down the bottom for your YouTube watchers. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, whatever you use, I don't judge, and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A at Google Play or the App Store and use the code locked on MLB. Ibotta, let's uh, put some uh, cash in your pocket. <laughs> Why did I become Chico Marx at the end of that ad read? Hey, uh, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch over to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports Day gives you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Hey, uh, before I continue my yapping, and I promise I won't do much more screaming, uh, let's take a look at who got the trivia question the other day. Uh, and I had... Uh, when I had Jeff Snyder from Locked On Dodgers taking me to the woodshed. Um, Court Stell did get it right. The question was, um, the Dodgers three times have won the World Series and had the National League MVP on their team. The, the most recent one was Kirk Gibson. What were the other two? And the answers were Roy Campanella for the 1955 World Series champion Brooklyn Dodgers and Sandy Koufax for the 1963 World Series champion Dodgers. There you go. He was the MVP and the Cy Young Award and was on on the mound to clinch the World Series and threw a no-hitter that year. Safe to say Sandy Koufax had a good year. Okay, I'm going to continue dogpiling Schneider for a little bit because 
and I, I have nothing against the man. Okay, he's a baseball lifer. He was like a he was a super young manager in the minor leagues who worked his way up. He was on the roster. He was on the 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 coaching staff for the reason that he worked with a lot of the young players. He had managed a lot of the young players, like uh, Vladdy Jr. and everyone when they were playing for, under him. Uh, when he was the manager of the New Hampshire team, the double-A team in New Hampshire in the Blue Jays organization. And so when they had all these young stars rising to the major league level, then they needed to have – he was basically their mentor. And he was there to be like, okay, we're all here. We're all here together. Okay, you've got you got Schneider and things are feeling okay. You feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. And then when Montoyo got the axe, and I, I – wasn't sure if he you know deserved the axe or not but you know the schneider became the the new manager mainly for that reason that he was beloved by these star players well those star players have been in the major leagues for a few years now the whole hand holding thing maybe the whole hand holding thing when you look up and you're seeing that um bg oh bg is off to a good start Vladdy Guerrero is off to a terrible start this year. And some of the other young players are not off to good starts this year. And there's enough players on the team. You know, Bo Bichette's off to a lousy start. Alejandro Kirk is off to a lousy start. And there's enough people who are players from other organizations, like Varsho, like Kiermaier, like Springer, like Turner, who are all on the team. Do you want Maybe the whole idea of we need the mentor for these three guys can't be the reason to keep him around. Yeah, I know the season's young, but it's been clear this isn't the right fit for over a year. And quite frankly, how long is this window of opportunity going to be there? We've seen windows of opportunity slam shut. May I introduce you to the Chicago White Sox, who play in a hell of a lot of an easier division than the Toronto Blue Jays did, and their window of opportunity was really only two and a half years. Things can fall apart fast. And the Blue Jays need to have some of these big star players, the Guerreros, the Bijou, all of them need to start clicking. And they need to start clicking pretty soon. Because, yes, it's early in the season, but there is nothing to show that this team has a spark. There was no sense of urgency last night. None. They just won a series, came home against one of the worst teams in baseball, and laid an egg. They look lifeless. How do you not build on that series? How do you have such a good series against uh, the, the take advantage of the Seattle Mariners and then have, you know, uh, uh, Nolan Jones show up and start to look like he's Larry Walker and have Ryan McMahon look like he's an absolute Hall of Famer? How can you have that positive time that you had in Seattle winning those games and now you go to uh, look at the standings What's their streak? Oh, they're on a two-game losing streak. Handing the ball to a kid making their big league debut. That positivity that happened in Seattle, if it goes slightly wrong today, suddenly that's an L3 in their streak. Something needs to be done, and maybe having the mentor and the training wheels on some of the top players there need to come off, and maybe a change of direction needs to be there. Sometimes a manager is a prick. Dallas Green was a jerk when he was the manager of the Phillies. And he took over a Phillies team that was good enough to make the playoffs, but not good enough to get over the top. And what happened under Dallas Green? For the first time in the history of the Philadelphia Phillies, they won the freaking World Series. Sometimes you need someone who's the cute and cuddly. Terry Francona struck me as the cute and cuddly. He was what that team needs. Sometimes you need the jerk. But either way, you need something, and it's not Schneider. Schneider could wind up being a terrific manager. Francona bombed when he managed the Phillies. That happens. It may just be the wrong fit right now. But the Blue Jays right now are worse than the Red Sox, and the Red Sox stink right now. They just got shut out by the Angels. I didn't think that was possible. And the Blue Jays are looking up at a division where the Rays look good. The Yankees look great. And the Orioles look like Burns is 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 that 
ideal acquisition, and they're bringing up a, a, their own sons of superstars. This could get out of hand really fast because we're seeing the same ingredients being cooked in this stew. Why do we think it's going to taste better? There are very good managerial candidates. You want old I mentioned this the other day. You want old school, you want Madden or someone like that, fine. You want to give Hensley Mullins a chance, fine. Make a change. The superstars have their mentor and they're wetting the bed. Let's work on this right now because this is, it's early, but do you know what? It's a surefire bet that things can get out of hand fast. And speaking of betting, FanDuel. Hey, our friends at FanDuel. Hey, the NCAA tournament is over. Go UConn. I'm a native of Connecticut. My mom got her doctorate at UConn, so I got to say go UConn. But the NBA playoffs and the Stanley Cup playoffs are right around the corner, and the Toronto Blue Jays better hope they start winning games in Major League Baseball. If you're going to make any bets, go to FanDuel. It's your place to bet on every one of those games. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, and sacrifice bunts. All on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Hey, you know what? We're going to talk to our friends at LinkedIn, are you struggling to close deals? Business to business selling is tougher than ever. And I need to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive higher revenues, and increase sales performance. Series Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes, which accounts you should prioritize, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are the most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member program, I'm on LinkedIn, I don't want to brag, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on to get started. LinkedIn, let's make some connections. Hey, here is a reminder that Locked On has begun the first 24 7 streaming channel for sports on YouTube, and now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV's channel app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Hey, let's talk about a team that's doing well. Uh, other than the Oakland A's, by the way, uh, Lawrence Butler was the big hero in Oakland. Uh, go over to Locked On A's uh, because your pal Sully's hosting that. And they're not repeats of this show. They're brand new episodes. Although there's a segment of the show that I did, uh, that I dropped on Friday that I think I'm going to include here because it was a plea to A's fans to put your bitterness aside for a second and go to a game. Just go to a game because well, the bitterness will subside and then the regret that you didn't go will be there. Uh, and I told a story about it. And so I think I'm going to include that in tomorrow's episode. And yes, for those of you who wonder if I post over the weekend, yeah, I post Saturday and Sunday whenever I can. Uh, the, A's are, the A's are the anti-Blue Jays. They're building on their momentum. But the Pirates also, uh, they wound up beating Philadelphia the other day. And that's no small thing. The Phillies are a team that I picked to win the World Series. They're full of talent. And, uh, and you know, and the Brewers are also, as I mentioned in WAB, Freddie Peralta and uh, Willie Adamas took over that Orioles team filled with young talent. And they said, yeah, here, I got your young talent right here. Final score, 11 to 1. The, the Brewers scored 11 runs. Peralta struck out 11 batters. But the Pirates, you know, Derek Shelton was one of those people I wondered about him as a manager. 
And um, you can't argue what they're doing. The first two weeks, they're 10 and four. Uh, you can't argue with the fact that, you know, uh, Henry Davis got a couple of big hits yesterday. So he's maybe he started to get a little bit hotter right there. Giant fans are going to pull their hair out if Joey Bart winds up becoming a star right there. But uh, Michael A. Taylor's fit with the team well. You know, O'Neill Cruz and Cabrian Hayes look like they, this may be years where things really start to turn around. But it's the pitching staff. You know, Mitch Keller has been the weak link in their pitching staff. Martin Perez has been a, a godsend. Uh, Jared Jones has been terrific. Uh, they've been getting, you know, a Bailey Falter has done pretty well, has not lived down to his name. Marco Gonzalez, who was an afterthought when they picked him up, has done well in his first couple of games. And they've, they've had some good depth. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, Mitch Keller and David Bednar, their two big stars in their pitching staff, have been the weak link so far in the first couple of weeks. So if things turn around for them, uh, there you go. And then, like uh, like John the Baptist screening, you know, calling prepare ye, uh, Paul Skeens has uh, just as a strikeout machine in AAA right now. And I was thinking about something the other day. I was thinking that a lot of times the Orioles during their heyday, uh, even before Earl Weaver came over, when they were starting to establish how they're going to do things, when they had a star pitcher, they would sometimes bring them up as a reliever first to get them used to the major leagues. Jim Palmer came up as a reliever. In fact, you've seen many people who were big star pitchers first break in coming out of the pen. Chris Sale did that when he was with the Chicago White Sox. When they initially brought him up, they brought they used him out of the bullpen. Not that they thought he was not going to be a starter, but it was a way to say, hey, if you're not going to be, you know, throwing huge number of innings right away, then let's build you up and take advantage of some of those innings right now. Bob Welch would, you know, think about some of these Cy Young winners like Bob Welch and Oral Hershiser back in the 80s initially came up as relief pitchers. Jimmy Key, who was a terrific pitcher in the 80s and 90s, initially was brought up as a reliever, got used to the major leagues, and then made the transition to the starting rotation. And Right now, Paul Skeens is is in AAA and treating those batters like they're Little League hitters. They just look bad. Now, I'm not saying throw him into the Major League and have and start pitching him as if he's Felix Hernandez and expect to get 220-some-odd innings out of him. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying if this guy is clearly Major League ready and you say, well, we're going to use him three innings here, we're going to use him three innings there, well, what if he did that in the majors? Seriously. What if he did that and you you have him on your team and you say, every three days, you're going to throw three major league innings. And it might be the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings. Or it might be the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. Here comes Skeens. Here comes Skeen Claus. Here comes Skeen Claus. Comes out he's, and every three days, he's going to throw the final three innings. If they're up 11 nothing, they're up 2 nothing. He piles up some, you know, he starts to earn some inning, starts to earn some saves. It's skiing time. I don't know. I'm not into marketing, even though I do have a master's degree in communications. It's not in marketing. But the positive thing for the Pirates is if they don't want to do that, they're still winning. They don't have to, you know, break glass for an emergency. They could build him up the way they want. I'm just saying if he's throwing those innings, why not throw him in the major leagues? And the Pirates could build up because we saw last year they go off to a great start and they fell apart. Pile up all these wins right now. Pile them up. It's the NL Central. There is no team that is running away with it. Right now, the Pirates and the Brewers by far look like the best team over the first couple of weeks. But we'll see. But when you have this monumental talent and we also see how arms get broken down, Paul Skeens will have surgery eventually. Mark the date. It's going to happen. We all know it. So if you're only going to get so many major league pitches out of them, why not get them right now? Uh, we're doing lots. We got who we got as a comment uh, here. Uh, Zach Mitchell says, uh, Everyday Sully, A's fans here love the MLB podcast, not MKB. Unless there may be an MKB podcast. I can't get on some of the typos. Just want to say thank you for hosting Locked On. A's podcast for a while, love the baseball story inside instead of stadium drama. Well, you know, I'm I'm going to put my talk of Shohei Otani and Ape on the 
back burner because there's not much more to talk about. And how much more can we talk about the stadium with the A's? You know, I, there's, 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 there's only so much you can say. It's incompetent. They've been incompetent. Everything has gone wrong. And it's the stupidest transition I've ever seen. And I saw the Expos move. I never thought it could get dumber than that. But yeah, and I'm happy to be the guest host of Locked On A's as long as they'll have me. So, uh, well, let's talk about the trivia question for today and talk about changing managers in midstream. We saw that work with Thompson and the Phillies a few years ago when they went to the World Series. We saw that the Blue Jays went to the playoffs under Schneider. However, when the Milwaukee Brewers won the wild card and made the playoffs for the first time since 1982, they won the wild card in 2008. They made a managerial change in the final month of the season. Who was the interim manager who managed to take the claim of, I managed a team in the playoffs, despite only being the Brewers manager for about a month? Who was the Brewers interim manager who was technically their manager during the 2008 playoffs? That's your trivia question. Put it right down here uh, on YouTube or Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram, or I'm your pal, Sully at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about something other than gambling, thank goodness. This has been Locked On MLB for Saturday, the 13th of April, 2024. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.